sorry. Hey guys, it's Adrenaline Junkie. Hope you enjoy the video you're about to watch. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, hit the like button, follow us on Instagram, and like us on Facebook. Enjoy the ride. Hey guys, happy Good Friday. You know what that means, Good Friday ride. We usually do a Good Friday ride every season. This year, uh, a few of the guys can't make it and it's pretty rainy out there today. The weather's not the greatest, but we ain't made of sugar. And that fin trail gear back there, it's gonna keep me dry. So even if I was made of sugar, I ain't gonna melt. Uh, so yeah, just heading over to uh, get some fuel, get some Tim Hortons for breakfast. For all you Canadians, you know what Timmy's is. It's an essential staple of every ride and pretty much every other road trip, whether you want it to be or not. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing. Gonna go fuel up, get some food, and we're heading to our buddy John's place, and we're meeting up with John, Josh, and Corey. John drives the Razor 900 Trail. Josh drives the Arctic Cat 700 Wildcat uh, Sport Limited. And uh, you know Corey drives that brand new shiny Can-Am Maverick XMR and we're gonna try and make it less shiny today by putting some more scratches on it. And then there's my battle wagon on the trailer back there. 2017 Razor XP Turbo with a bunch of goodies from Super ATV and Royal Distributing on there and all my other supporters. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good ride. It's gonna be sloppy. It's gonna be a good time. Just pulling up to the gas station, there's the Timmy's. And those are those nice Canadian gas prices. $1.25 today. A liter. That ain't a gallon. That's a liter. Got the breakfast. Time to hit the road. So thanks for joining us on another ride guys. If you haven't checked out some of the previous content and you're new to the channel, make sure you check out some of the other videos. Also don't forget to subscribe and like the videos and follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. I think I need a new truck. Mine leaks. It drips everywhere. It leaks there too. It leaks up there. It drips here like crazy. I got a bunch of Team AJP t-shirts and swag and stickers back there. So I'm gonna get the guys all geared up in the new 2019 Team AJP t-shirts and swag. I'm rocking this nice crew neck sweater for the colder rides. So yeah, I'm gonna get all the guys and the crew geared up with some nice new t-shirts for this season. And also get some stickers out there, add some horsepower to the rides, you know, stickers add power and torque. I've already explained this. Single tone stickers add horsepower only. Two tone stickers add horsepower and torque. So, you know, you do a kind of multiplier bonus if you put them all together. And then if you wear a t-shirt as well, that adds a little bit of damage resistance. You know, just saying. Well, we're almost at John's place. Should be there in about a minute. So, gonna meet up with the boys, hang out, dish out some of that swag, get the machines all geared up and ready to go and then we're gonna hit the trails. Here we are, the XMR's already here. Let's get this ride going. Riding today requires a little bit of road burning between some of the trail sections, so I'll try and cut out most of the, the boring stuff. But um, yeah, it should be an enjoyable ride. Later on in the ride, um, we'll do some cool climbs, we'll see how the Maverick XMR does. There's going to be a good mix of riding, there's a bunch of different machines out here today, so it should be a fun time. The trails are still pretty fresh after winter, so there's going to be a lot of trees down, stuff like that. So we're not sure what to expect. Some of the trails might be flooded out. So we're just gonna take it like it comes and kind of make the best of it. It's sloppy and rainy out, but that's not gonna stop us. It's the beauty of off-roading. Doesn't matter what the weather is, as long as you gear up for it, you're good to go. Woo. I don't know how good uh, you guys are gonna be able to see because that camera is gonna keep getting all wet. But uh, we'll try our best to keep the camera clean and maybe get some shots once we get into the bush.
On the left here, we've got a new addition to our team this year, Brian, driving the brand new Razer XP1000. And then on the left here, we've got Gimpy. You guys are familiar with him in the 900S. Next up is Brandon on the left here in the Wildcat Trail. Another new addition is Eric here on his 2018 Can-Am Renegade 850. We've got Fish in front of him in the Can-Am Commander 800. And then Corey in the Can-Am Maverick Sport XMR. Here you see John pulling up in the Polaris Razor 900 Trail. Behind him is Josh in the Arctic Cat Wildcat 700 Sport Limited. And we should have a bunch of new machines joining us this season, so it's going to be a good year. We don't get many ATVs out lately. Rick behind this Renegade for a little while. Things sounds evil. He just put that exhaust on there and some nice Super ATV Intimidator tires. A little bit louder than no exhaust.
sounds sweet. <laughs> That's where the sounds made. Oh, look at that. It's got a nice, uh, it's got a nice exhaust spring right. holding it all together. What year is that thing? Uh, oh, it's brand new! <laughs> RJWC exhaust on the Renegade sounds evil. RJWC makes one of the best sound and exhaust systems for the Can-Am platforms. For you guys who don't know, RJWC is actually based out of northern Sweden, but their two largest markets are the United States and Canada. Although the exhaust sounds evil, remember it is obnoxiously loud. It's one of the loudest exhausts I've ever heard on a Renegade. So make sure you keep that in mind when you're shopping around. As usual, we're going to stop here for a little bit, take a quick break, and play in the creek a little. Corey just can't help himself. He constantly wants to get that XMR in that creek. I think he really wants to see how deep he can go with those snorkels. And I mean, I'm not going to stop him, that's for sure. And I probably won't even follow him through most of it. But I will make sure I'm holding that camera because I know you guys want to see what that new Maverick Sport XMR can really do. You can see the difference in the front diff there where his wheel didn't go and yours does. Yeah. Woo! Yeah! That was you got that diff smart lock. locker, right? Yeah, that was just the mud mode too. It's got mud mode? Mud mode, trail mode, and then full diff lock. Cool. Uh, trail mode, I guess, the more high speed shit. Yep. Just, like, it locks up and then the full lock is like... Yeah, locker right down. Come on, guys. Your turn. No, I've been down in there a couple times. Man, it's Good. washed out. I walked in there the other day. Is it, yeah? You remember how we always used to we used to yeah. drive around here, yeah. right? Or two, right? Yeah, it's all washed out. Eh? Yeah, it's, totally it's brutal. That spot right there is like I neck got a deep. Spot when I out. Oh, I got a wet oh the corner there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, this you stuff changes like every week though, because it's all silt, right? It's not deep here, but all over there where we used to drive around, it's like eight yeah. feet deep again. You gonna just take those side? I don't think you could unless we pulled that wood out of there. I can't. I, I can't believe I rolled it over here last time. Literally right here. Yeah, I just hit it at the wrong angle, and the suspension yep. pushed me back. Whoop. Yeah. Shocks unloaded on yep. you. Just tossed it. Yep. <laughs> it's like you've been there before. <laughs> That's why it's not got the hard case. That was awesome! Yeah. Well, we got a good view of that nice skid plate there, Julian. Yeah, got a good shot of that skid plate. Yep. Looks good still. 
It's a rival skid plate, and uh, it works real well. What are you doing? We do a little drop in here, have a little fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Can this thing handle that kind of water? Oh, it's no problem. Hit the front end. <laughs> Hey Dan, do you miss your commander yet? Do you miss yours? No. Do you ever take the Defender out here? No. They're cool machines. Yeah. Oh, he's dickered now. He's dickered. It's deep over in that corner, yeah. You're draining your cargo box, I see. Oh, that's my dry compartment. Yeah, your dry box? <laughs> well, it's important to keep it clean, right? Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, that keeps your beverages cold. Well, it works, right? 
it works good yeah for is that uh for live tackle and stuff like that yeah like, yeah, yeah, when, yeah when you're going on your fishing, fishing trip and, yeah. yeah that's why it's green right it's for fishing and stuff yeah 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 you got to keep camouflaged you know yeah 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 so yeah. the fish can't see you yeah and you just pull right into the pond yeah i didn't catch anything though no. nah not the, it's early it's early yeah. in the season yeah. right yeah i saw him looking at that he's like my renegade could, could <laughs> run circles around you dude that's what he was thinking <laughs> Come on. I ain't got no. The snorkel. water's warm, bro. Come on. <laughs> Next time. Good time. You gonna you let this it. old man beat you up there? Yeah. Age in the cage here, you know? Yeah. Age in Cajun. You, you enjoy your age in the cage. Yeah. I'll enjoy my quad not getting swamped. <laughs> now that is what's gonna keep you out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> not giving in to us. <laughs> oh, yeah. Always trust the guy holding the camera. Yeah. Always. Always. He doesn't always. encourage always. anything, right? All those guys that didn't aren't here anymore. <laughs> Dan, who rides the black Can-Am Maverick X3 Turbo, just messaged us saying that he's ready to meet up. So me and Gimp here are going to go head over and meet him and then come on back here. It's wet out, I'm rocking my fin trail wading gear. It's the best gear on the market for wet weather riding. If you're looking for some new gear to keep you dry, look no further than fintrail.com. I highly recommend it. So now we're just heading back to regroup with the rest of the guys where we left by the creek, and we'll get back onto the trail. Josh is just telling Gimpy that when he was going over the bridge, one of those main logs snapped and he almost fell in off the side so he had to winch out. So now the sketchy bridge got even sketchier. Uh, Josh hasn't been feeling too well so he's heading home early today so uh, we'll have to link up with him next ride. We're going to keep heading back though and see what that bridge looks like. Come back and 
I love this thing. Said, oh, we got a verbal offer, which sounds like, like bullshit. Like you said, <laughs> save the, you got a lot oh, of so many back. times. And I rolled it over in West Virginia once. I know, I thought I could see it go. Wow, well, that's why we have video cameras. I wasn't expecting that to roll over like that. No, I know. <sighs> On that side, and like all it did was this. Yeah. This guy bought and then this like it scratched it here. It would have like it would, my door wasn't even touching the ground. It would have mangled it. it. Yeah, it's a really okay, good well, investment. It's heavy, I but the the listing agent, right? I don't give a shit. You're not working for me. Like, that's not like a lack of any power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you got. You got to play ball. Not racing, right? Yeah. yeah. Is this is this yeah. yours? Yeah. Well, I used to have a around. Yeah. You uh you gave me the helpful advice on that. Oh, did you? Oh, you did build one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, that's, right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. that's over at the track there. Uh, you that has, uh, I bet you felt that hit a few times, haven't you? Couple. Well, you were way ahead. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, when you did broke that. Down. Where that bar comes in. For what it takes. As soon as you said it, man, it all made so much yeah, sense. Right the the down, exactly. Yeah, that hinge, like, I don't want to buy a whole new box. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. I broke all the shit, all the pieces like, underneath there. So, yeah, I mean, we, like, that's soft dirt's like, not bad, but when it gets frozen, it's an A-frame. Exactly. That's right. Yeah, hidden. It's your little hidden part in your cooler. Which I would probably close and call out. You get three cases in there. Well, you can get the extended arms for four, yeah, four inch ones. Or to the back. Uh, yeah. It's wired for a generator. But I got a 2.5 like left in it. Like yeah, you used the wheel there. Right? 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 I had a seat in here. A, a deep seat. Right? I see no. Right in there. I see no. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Okay, enough talking and reminiscing. Let's get back to the riding now. Needless to say, we've had a lot of good times together on these trails, with many more on the way. Back to the sketchy bridge. That's getting way sketchier. Looks like we've got a stuck kitty cat and needs some help. some of our other trails where we can do a little bit more technical riding. Later on in the ride, um, a few of us will break off and we'll do some good hill climbs and stuff like that in the can Maverick Sport XMR, the Commander and my Razor, and we'll, uh, we'll see which machine comes out on top there.
if you remember me mentioning in the previous video if you watched it, uh, there's a lot of water. The water levels are really high in a lot of areas this season. We've had a lot of rain and um, there's still a lot of standing water in places where there usually wouldn't be. As you can see here, a lot of the swamps are really overflowing, making some of our trail sections still inaccessible. We got stuck there last let someone get stuck without documenting it. If it's not on video or picture, it didn't happen. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram and on Facebook to check out a lot of the pictures from these rides. Mike got stuck here in the Maverick Sport last week. Let's see if that uh, Renegade can go through. He went through it in the X the whole thing. It's not deep past here. We all went through here. I know, we're starting to not need the Razor one so much. Oh, hey, Corey. Those t-shirts would come with a can of ammo on the front. Huh? I got one with that. Yeah, you can find where shop rank goes.
Well, that was pretty fun to watch. That front section of the swamp's getting pretty chewed out and rutted under there, so you can see the machines are starting to get stuck now, even the XMR. We got a lot more good action coming up ahead. is asking me about what I think about the new CF Moto machines. My honest opinion? Go out, buy an Articat Wildcat Sport Limited or a Trail if you're on a budget. Consider getting a used 900 XP at 2012 to 2014 or a 900S. I would do anything you can to stay to the big brands rather than go to a brand like CF Moto where you're not going to get the aftermarket support or the long-term reliability that you're after if this is the kind of riding you want to do. Feel free to chime in below and let me know what you think about other brands, but I've tried a bunch of CF Motos and I've never been impressed with them. I just don't think they're made for riders like us. Back at our tight tunnel. You guys will remember this from the last ride.
touch a little more on the brand discussion. I'm not brand bashing CF Moto. You guys know I don't like to brand bash in general. I try to be open and unbiased about my opinions and what I see and what I think. So with that being said, a lot of you guys have been asking questions like that. You've been asking about what are the best tires, what are the best upgrades to do first. What would you recommend? I'm going to do videos like that this season. I'm going to answer a lot of those popular questions in various videos. So if you guys have any requests or topics you want to discuss, leave me a comment below and I'll try my best to touch on all of it. I'm just doing a quick 360 here. While we ride, I like to make sure my machine's all good, check my tire pressures, make sure there's nothing hanging off, nothing ripped, nothing broken on the machine. I smacked those trees in that tunnel section pretty hard with the bars. I just wanted to make sure I didn't bend nothing or, or hit nothing too hard or damage it. So it's good to keep an eye on your machine throughout the ride. I mean, um, if you don't catch something right away, it has the potential to cause collateral damage. So it's really good to be observing. Got a little sidetracked there and lost John, but we're back on track now. Lots of trees down, lots of branches. So we're having a nice skid plate comes in handy. You don't have to worry about any of that crap getting caught up underneath you or punching a hole in your scrappy stock plastic skid plate.
see how different these trails look when there's no leaves yet. In a couple weeks when the leaves all fill in, you're gonna hardly be able to see anything around you and you'll be like driving through a tunnel here. That's one of the nice things about riding in all sorts of different seasons. You really get a different type of trail experience every time of the year or during the day versus the night and stuff like that. John's place. Some of the guys are wet and cold and some of them have to go. So a few of us are going to keep riding and this is where the fun's really going to start. We're going to go hit up some more technical trails. It's going to start raining more. It's going to get slick and sloppy. So stay tuned. The fun's just about to begin. Thing, but we left, it's been good, and now it's getting Now it's starting to. Yeah. I thought Gimpy was in front of us. Well, we're just following the path. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. For some reason, I thought you had a glass windshield. I didn't realize it was just a hard coated one. Yeah, there you go. It's hard coated, and it's not scratching it. Very little. Yep. Yeah, we've gone through. Like that with the white birds around here. Did you just buy those white birds? Yeah, Amazon. Did I just build them? Yeah. Yeah, we just bought them. 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 Yeah, we just no razor complaints yet. No video though. Right? Oh hey, I've always been a Can Am guy, so that's why I run Can Am, right? Awesome. I've got a Defender at home as well. I run that one more than this one actually. Fun, okay. Everybody's got something different. Defender would be like lazy day, right? Yeah, that's the one we just use on the farm every day. And ride it so too though. Just the three of us. All the other p***ies left. So what do you want to do? Go down to that hill where you have to turn around and come back this way then? Yeah. Then we'll, then, we'll drop it the other side. Okay. You want to lean or what? I'll follow you, it don't matter. Let me go in the middle or whatever. Yeah, yeah. you want to you, you wanna go first or? I'll Makes lead. no difference to me, but if I go in the middle, then I can get both of you guys probably. Yeah, that's true. And then we can just switch it up as we ride. Right. I'll go first if you want. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. It's, this hill's a little slick. Uh, can you uh, hold my hand? Yeah. And then there were three, me and the Razor Turbo, Corey in the Can-Am Maverick Sport XMR, and Fish in the Can-Am Commander 800. Woo! It's never good when you leave us three alone, but it should be good for video, so let's go send it. She's slick! 
got some slick and sloppy technical trails coming up here, so it should be a good time. Oh yeah, the ride's just getting started. We lost the rest of the group. Something about happy wife, happy life or something. A bunch of people needed to go to dinner or some crap like that. does not make my racer look good there. I just didn't have the bite to get through Cory's ruts there. The ITP cryptids hook up way better than the Blackwaters in this goop. issue that I have with the ITP Blackwaters is the fact that they do measure about an inch small. If I knew that when I was purchasing them, I wouldn't have bought a 30, I would have bought a 32.
This was freaky. That machine is literally inches away from falling into that ravine. If he would have tapped the gas even a little bit more, that bank would have given out and he would have ended up probably on his side or on his roof in I don't know how many feet of water down there. But it would not have been good and we would have a hell of a time trying to get him out of there. Um, so it's good he let off the gas there and we're hooking up the winch now and we're going to pull him forward to safety. Oh, it's okay, I saw you. Well, we're this far in. Man, look at that shit. Oh, there's, a, there's another way out up here, is there not? I don't not know sure. if you guys should do that. That's a bad idea. That is a bad idea. And going back for you is a bad yeah. idea, too. I might. There's a way out up here, is it not fit? Okay. Uh, there's a way out up there, right? Yo, we can move that if we need to. Yeah. With your winch. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, we can move that no problem. We might as well move it, and that way we have a trail. Yeah, for sure. So spin around, and uh, We'll just winch that log out of the way, and then that way we can just drive by. Sounds good. That's sketchy. Oh, I was tired. I'm like, don't hit the gas! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we believe you, you can do it, just don't hit the gas. All these logs are making it so deep, oh, we see no trail away. Man, it's washed out so bad. Next year, there's going to be here, probably. So needless to say, as you guys can see, we've had record rainfalls. It's raining right now and uh, there's flooding all over the place in these areas and uh, all over Ontario, Canada and, and a lot of other places in the States. So um, it's been a wet, wet year. That right there though, is the whole reason for the feeling that you're out here. Yeah. That's the ones you, oh, you, yeah. you go for, right? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and that's why you don't ride without a winch. You'd be gonna move this log dude yeah i'm gonna grab on i got a nylon choker. this is sketchy too because it sends you that way eh? look how close he was to oh, falling yeah. off so usually i'd say when in doubt throttle out but i really don't think this was one of those cases this time do a little trail maintenance yeah Look at that shit. Get up and move it upward. This has to go too. That is good. Yeah, that's sketchy right there. Yeah, that's what f***ing me up right now. It definitely is. is. Oh, it's just right f***ing in the river. The way out. Oh, yeah. That's the way it out. They put it around the bank as a guideline. Okay. so we can get down there without falling in the creek. The amount of wash out here this season is crazy. I think we're good now, just ride up to the high side. Yeah, we're good, we can ride up this way. Cause you didn't have an issue until you hit the gas on that log. Right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not tired, right there. <laughs> right there, man, yeah. <laughs> like I swear to God, if you hit it one more time, yeah, she was, your wheel was already off the ground in the front. How'd that feel? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm next. Uh, you're next. 
You want me to trench it out for you so you got tracks? Uh, I did it over there for you. You went right line. through it. I, I, didn't, I didn't know you were throwing me old guys off. <laughs> I was grooming the trail, man. <laughs> That was definitely sketchy. You can see in that previous scenario that all it would have taken is one bad throttle application, a little bit more gas, and that Maverick could have been up on its roof over that bank, and that would not have been nice. I don't know how we would have gotten him out of there. So um, with that being said, um, I always joke about when in doubt throttle out, but there is a time and a place, and there's certain things you just can't undo, so definitely make sure you're weighing out the situation properly before you do something stupid out there. All I'm thinking right now is, damn, that's a narrow off-camera climb. So what you'll see in a minute is that what stopped me here is actually there was a root sticking out of the side of that bank that wrapped around my exoskeleton and stopped me dead in my tracks. Ready? Yeah. At this stage I thought it was going to be as easy as just winching my way up so that I didn't have to try and hit it again since it was so narrow, but I didn't realize how good of a hold that root actually had on me. So at this stage I realized down was the only way to go. Uh, there's no way I'm getting through these routes, so we're gonna have to find another way around here. You can just pass me the rope and I'll put it in here. I got a feeling we're gonna need it again. So this is the first time the Super ATV full protection kit has actually worked against me. <laughs>
One shot, one kill. Or not. All those lo all those roots and sticks got caught on my bars. They actually hindered me there. They got jammed up against here. And that screwed me, it got me caught. I have plenty of grip going up there, just couldn't fit, I'm too fat. So the climb to the left there, that fish is going up right now, is pretty tight too, and there's a big tree off to the left of it, and uh, it's gonna be hard to get around that. If you hit it too fast, you'll get sent right into that tree and smack it pretty hard, and it's also very sandy soil there, so there's not much grip. Yeah, I try and get her. I'm just worried it's gonna pop me off into that tree, yeah. right? Yeah, because when I was sitting there and I looked down, I was behind my yeah, back I've tire. Seen that, yeah. Okay, I'm probably just gonna see what it feels like up to here, and then, and then if it feels okay, I'm gonna try. Okay. But uh, my winch cable's all out anyway, so I'll just toss it to you. All right. You need to come here to back down, right? No. Okay, okay. This is the third Super ATV 4500 pound Black Ops winch I've run. So if you're looking for a winch that works well and won't let you down at a good price point, make sure you check out this unit. Thanks boys! Man, I know what you mean about that angle now. It doesn't look like that from the bottom. It's like freaking vertical. Like that. Woo! Before he's standing there and he's looking down at you, like that. So that's like eight points XMR, two points commander, and like two points razor. Might be time to reevaluate our game plan. I think so. Man, those bars are awesome. Yeah, they were good. You wouldn't 
Roy Fender deck. Yeah, it's the only reason I still got a wrap on this thing. It's those bars. <laughs> that was f***ing awesome, that's what I came out for, man. Got my heart pumped and I've had that since last fall. little blurb there on the screen the microphone's soaked and it's been getting splashed all day so it's starting to really impact its quality and its ability to pick up proper sound my camera gear takes a beating every single time we go out it's really rough on equipment I'm constantly having to upgrade and replace stuff since it's always getting pushed to its limits and beyond majority of the profits generated from the ad revenue on YouTube from all the videos go directly into just buying more camera gear and replacing the stuff I destroy out on the trail. And for any of you nerdier people out there wondering, I generate about 200 to 500 gigabytes of content every time we go out for a ride. And sometimes even more if we're going away for a few days on a trip up north or somewhere down to the states like West Virginia. So hard drives fill up pretty darn quick. And currently I record in 1080 60p. If I was recording in 4K, those file sizes could be about four times larger. Looks like they're clear. 
good. Makes it look easy. Oh, no problem. Those tires hook up wicked. Yeah, they work really well. Looks like fish is getting a little crazy over here at that hill climb. I've okay. only seen dirt bike hockey. I haven't even seen a dirt bike too. I've only heard of dirt bikes doing it though. Yeah, that tree's not even like a third of the way. What are you gonna do when you get to that little tree? I'm not sure yet. It gets so soft up there. Well, too. all I can tell you is... Well, it's, it's really off run when you get up there. You know what? Uh, I guarantee you, you won't have any problems coming down. Yeah, you'll make it down. You'll no make problem. it down, no problem. I, I Put off do, the, I no throttle. Yeah, idle. Yeah, I wouldn't do that, but... I'm not you. Usually we tell people to try stuff. I don't know. I don't yeah. think Greg would even do this. To quote John, since he's not here, this is kind of unsafe. Dry <laughs> <laughs> run. Now it's pretty unsafe. Let me move my machine for the car to roll over and back up. I got bumpers. Yeah, I know. It gets steeper up there. Get his winch hooked up. Why did you do that? <laughs> hey, that was not part of the plan. <laughs> Definitely not part of the plan. I didn't expect you to screw up in the easy spot. I didn't either. I listened to the angel there not do it, and now look where I went. Well, we were talking about, you know, your front end passing. I didn't tell you to try it. Can I get that nod for the camera? <laughs> boys will be boys. <laughs> hey, look on the bright side. <laughs> it's not Cory, dude. Because <laughs> usually it is. <laughs> I don't know what he's thinking. Because once you get to that little tree up there, what do you do? And then like, there's no backing down if you're past that tree. Even this is could have been much worse already. <laughs> but don't worry, I got it on camera. We both told him not to try it. Yo! Turn the wheels to the right and hit the gas. Don't pull forward. Now turn the wheels to the right other way, other way, other way, turn the wheels the other way and hit the gas forwards hard so that you slide around. No? Yep, okay, okay. Whoa, whoa.
Yeah, it's the best way. So what Corey and I are telling fish to do right now is to use the winch line as a pivot point and hit the gas in either two or four wheel drive to see if you can slide that ass end around. It's a really good technique to change the position you're in when you're in a steep incline like this with a winch line hooked up and there's something blocking you behind. You're gonna clear it, you're good. Yeah, that, that tree there. Karen, are you happy you got the camera time you wanted now, Princess? I am. Okay. I am. Okay. No complaint, you know. <laughs> Things happen. You know Super G could have gone up that in reverse in two-wheel drive, right? Yeah, I know. I ain't yeah. no Super G, though. No. No. With three broken axles. <laughs> and two flat tires. Are we staying or cruising? Okay. Stay tuned, back out. We're gonna hang out for a few minutes. Might as well chill for a bit. Okay. Hey. Whoa, don't roll it. So the conditions continue to deteriorate. It's getting darker and it's even more slick out now. So I, I couldn't make it up here. I just didn't have the grip in my tires. We gotta go more that way. 
That Maverick Sport XMR just crawls awesome with those ITP cryptids. They hook up great in this. Corey's trying to find a better spot to hook up the winch line. That one tree on the right there, it was too floppy, so we weren't getting a good pull off it. And the bigger trees in line with where we need to pull from are so far away that the peak of the hill there is getting in the way and my winch is digging into the ground. It's not good winching practice to do this and let the line cut into the ground because it could sever the line uh, by hitting a rock or some debris under there. But desperate times call for desperate measures sometimes. I was wrong we weren't good the winch line kept cutting to the peak of that hill there so it was really putting a lot of strain on the cable and the winch so we decided to grab Corey's rig and just pull me the rest of the way we probably should have done this a lot sooner as a lot of you guys know since you do ride as well um, not all rides are full of glamour and crazy climbs and just full sends uh, sometimes you gotta deal with these crappy situations and, and make the best of them. So uh, that's the cool thing about these longer cut rides. I really get to give you guys a chance to see what goes on throughout the whole ride as if you're really there riding with us. Can am power, baby! <laughs> well, the winch has got to work out. That's the first time I've used this winch today. I just put a new one on. All I had to do was try and keep up with the can am, and I knew I'd need it. Oh crap, my camera's on. I'll have to edit that out. Oh, it's because he's got those tractor tires wrecking the, wrecking the trails, promoting creek bed erosion. Yeah, my gloves are wet. <laughs> my hands are cold. I need to hear a steering wheel. Well, you gotta take the good with the bad, you can't win them all. I had to let the Can-Am save my ass. And when you dish it out, you gotta be able to take it too, so there's definitely gonna be some ball busting coming with this one. But honestly, busting chops and laughing about it is just as much fun as the ride in itself. made it out of the trail in one piece so pretty good ride we got a little bit of a road cruise back to John's place now and it's pouring now and it feels like my face is getting pressure washed So we made it back to John's place alright. 
It's been a long, wet ride. It's been sloppy out there. So uh, why don't you guys come on in the garage once we load up the trailers and uh, we'll shoot the breeze and have a beer. Come on in, don't be shy. I feel like my face got sandblasted. <laughs> that sounds safe. Right. It's kinda deep. That's how we, we're right. sitting on the trail, he's trying this silly climb, right? And I'm like, to quote John, I'm like, this could be kind of dangerous. <laughs> yeah, that one, that one's so fun. So, Corey, how'd it go, bud? We're good, good ride. XMR works freaking awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Excellent day. How that, how that commander do? That commander? Commanded. It commanded me all the way around yep. wherever I yep. wanted to go. Fish tank. The razor did okay. <laughs> not my not my brightest moment here. I'm a little rusty. And then John's like all warm and yep. fed with Showered, pork chops in him. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Got people messaging me asking me how well uh, that new Maverick Trail is working. Maverick Trail is just what do you think of your What do you think of your Maverick Trail, man? <laughs> or not your Maverick Trail? What do you think of your What do you think of your new Maverick Sport XMR? It's awesome. Definitely, if you're looking at getting a side by side, that's the one to get. You're happy with it? Oh, yeah, 100%. It's a small Sweet round man. machine, I must yeah. say. Put some black waters on there and 32 inch black waters probably coming yeah. up soon. Some bead locks. Sweet. So, first impressions are pretty good. Oh, yeah. Tons of people are asking about how you like it. Oh, it's amazing. I think this video today is going to help prove the point. There's like two or three guys on the last video, and they're like, Yep, I'm going out to buy one, yeah. like this week. They're like, I've been waiting for this video, yeah, and they're like... Discounted parts for Corey. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 can't am. No, warranty no matter what, warranty no matter what. I didn't even get a free shirt when I bought it. <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh. I don't know who to send this to, but I hope they're watching. Cool. Well, good ride, guys. Thanks for having us out, John. Absolutely, thanks for coming. Hey, guys, Adrenaline Junkie here. For all you long-term viewers, thanks for coming back. Appreciate all the support. For anyone newer, uh, I hope you subscribe to the channel, check out some of our previous content, stay tuned for the new stuff. Also, you can follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. Uh, got a lot in store for 2019. Uh, we keep teaming up and growing the team with new supporters, new sponsors. The fan base continually grows. Um, so we got a lot in store, a lot of rides, a lot of videos. Um, to a lot of you guys that have been watching for a while, you know that I pretty much run this channel really on my own as far as the uh, the behind the scenes stuff is concerned like video editing photography um, editing all the photos all the posting on social media and the uploads on youtube um, i do 90 95 plus percent of that uh, whether it's running the shopify store or anything like that so i'm really a one-man team um, a lot of the guys when we go out and ride they'll help me film stuff like that uh, it is a team it is a team effort when it comes to that i mean there would be no channel without without the crew right because we'd have nothing to film but um, I know I've been a little behind on uploads lately and, and the reason behind that is simply just because I'm swamped with, uh, with other life responsibilities, whether it be work or stuff around home, uh, other stuff I need to get done. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you gotta pay the bills and the YouTube channel does not do that, uh, no matter what you guys think. Um, we are a relatively small channel um, in comparison to a lot of channels on YouTube. Uh, we're only coming up on about 40,000 subscribers right now, um, which to me is mind-blowing because when I first started this channel, I never even thought, you know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I, I was never really planning much on, on growth. I was doing it because I like to, and, and I'm still doing it because I like to. It's a passion project for me. Um, I do this because I enjoy to do this, and, uh, and I'm going to do it whether I get a few bucks in ad revenue or not. So to address some of the questions a lot of people have had, like stuff like, oh, why is there so many ads on the videos? Well, generally speaking, YouTube decides kind of where it's gonna place these ads and, and how many ads are gonna show up based on your viewing characteristics, stuff like that. There's a complex algorithm. Um, also, the ad revenue is really the only way a creator on YouTube like myself gets any sort of like monetary return on the investment of time we put in. Um, some of these videos that I edit, the, the, the videos that are like an hour plus to, to an hour to three hours basically, like an hour and a half video takes me 40 to 80 hours to edit. Um, and that doesn't always include the amount of time it takes to shoot the content and get to where we're going. Uh, there's a lot of expenses related with shooting this content. Um, the, the camera equipment, the microphones, the cameras, the computer equipment, the software subscription fees, uh, the storage, uh, every, every weekend ride, like when we do a trip to West Virginia, for example, for two or three days, I generate about 750 gigs of content. Um, 
that's a ton of content. So, I mean, I've got stacks of hard drives. Uh, last year I spent probably five or six grand building the computer to, to handle editing all this stuff. Um, there's tons of camera gear and the camera gear is constantly getting abused. Um, a lot of these cameras don't have a long lifespan in the conditions we film in, especially when it's cold and wet and, and it's raining or it's snowing. Uh, the, the gear really does get abused heavily. Um, so, I mean, the life cycle of some of these products isn't very long when, when you're dropping them or they're getting hit by debris. Um, so with that being said, I mean, uh, basically 95% of the, the profit that comes from the channel, which really isn't that much, goes directly back into the channel. All the profit goes directly back into the channel, whether it's from uh, YouTube revenues or the few bucks I make on Shopify. Um, but the Shopify income from like the t-shirts and stuff like that, it's basically kind of more or less at like a break even point rather than like a, a, a large profit margin. Um, so the few bucks that I do make, I just want you guys to know they go back directly into to purchasing mostly new camera gear and, um, and the equipment required to process the videos like the software and the computer hardware. Um, and, and that's where the that's where the funds go. Um, uh, the time that I invest into this is simply just it's my free time and sometimes I don't have much of it. So the more free time I have, the more videos I can make. When I'm busy with other responsibilities, unfortunately I just I don't have the time to edit all this content to a level I feel is adequate to release. Uh, I don't like rushing through projects. I like taking my time on them so that I can provide you guys with quality content that you enjoy watching. So um, I just want to kind of touch on some of those topics. Also, I'd love you guys to leave me some comments and let me know like what kind of videos you really want to see, what your favorite machines are, stuff like that. Uh, I got a lot in store. I recently tried out a new 900S from, from Grand River Power Sports. They lent me a machine. Uh, I've been talking to them about getting my hands on a Ranger 1000 as well so I can try that out on the trails. Uh, next week, um, depending on when this video is released, but so let's just say I'll also be trying a, a, a brand new Honda Talon really soon. Um, I got a lot in store. Um, there's a lot of plans, but unfortunately, sometimes the time and the and the you know the other schedule clashes with the fun schedule. I mean, and sometimes you got to put life in front of fun. Uh, so the goal is to kind of grow the channel a little bit more. If we can if we can get subscriber numbers up, if we, if we can get more people watching the videos and sharing them, hitting that thumbs up button, uh, following us on Instagram and on Facebook, so that we can get more kind of traction with the videos and the content when we upload it then hopefully that'll increase channel revenue a bit and it'll let me step up my game as far as, you know, upgrading the computer a bit more and um, also upgrading the uh, camera gear a little bit more to give you guys a bit more quality out of the, um, the, the footage. Uh, a lot of you guys say that the quality is really good, you like it, um, you think it, it's well done. And so thanks a lot. I, I've really been working hard at that. Uh, I mean, I'm self-taught. This is just a hobby to me. I've always been into this stuff. So it's kind of like every video I learn something else and, and slowly I get better. So your feedback really does help. Um, let me know what you want to see. Uh, sorry for the delays in the videos lately. I've just, I've been busy with work and stuff like that. And uh, as a lot of you guys know, this is not a cheap hobby. You need a truck, you need a trailer, you need to buy the machine. You need to pay for a lot of the maintenance associated with it. You have to pay to get to the places you're going. It takes a lot of time to wrench on the machine and maintain it. It takes a lot of time to get to the places you need to go. And you need to balance that out with the budget you have to live your life. Um, and depending on how much money you make and how much free time you have, that dictates kind of how all this turns out. So uh, I really do appreciate the support you guys give me and I really am grateful and thankful for the fact that, that you guys have really made one of my dreams come true as far as having a machine where, where there's sponsors on board and people are watching the, the content and, and giving me feedback and leaving comments and stuff like that. So thanks so much guys, I really do appreciate it. I don't want to draw this out any longer. Um, I'm going to make a lot of cool videos this year, so uh, just leave me ideas on really what you want to see the most of. And uh, I hope you enjoy the content that's coming your way. And uh, yeah, thanks again, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Now get out there and ride!